In this video, we are going to take a look at the consumption and investment without capital markets. Consumption is the spending for acquisition of you. Investment is done to allocate money in the expectation of some benefit in the future. So in this video, we will be looking at consumption as consumption now and investment as consumption in the future. Capital markets are financial markets in which new or old securities are bought and sold. So when we say that we don't have capital markets, it means that it is a Robinson Crusoe economy without the option for individuals to borrow or lend. So now we're going to take a look at how individuals make a consumption and investment decision without capital markets. We assume that all outcomes from investment are known with certainty. There are no transaction costs or taxes. Decisions are made on the basis of one period. Individuals are endowed with income at the beginning of the period, that is Y0, and at the end of the period, Y1. They must decide how much to actually consume now, C0, and how much to invest in productive opportunities in order to provide end of period consumption, C1. Every individual prefers more consumption to less. This is because when they consume more, the utility increases. The marginal utility of consumption is always positive. However, it is decreasing. This is because as we consume more, the utility is increasing, but the increase in utility decreases with every consumption. Now, we'll be looking at six diagrams to understand the consumption and investment decisions of an individual. First of all, we'll be looking at utility from current consumption. On the x-axis, we have consumption now, C0. On the y-axis, we have utility from consumption now, which is U, C0. So here we have the total utility curve, U, C0. You can see that as the consumption increases in equal proportions, utility increases, but in lesser proportions. That is, the marginal utility decreases. When consumption increases, utility also increases, but in smaller proportions. This is the utility from consumption in current period, keeping the consumption in future as constant. Now, let's take a look at the utility that we derive from both consumption today, C0, and consumption tomorrow, C1. Here, we have the utility from consumption U, C0, and C1 in the y axis. And on the x-axis, we have consumption in current period C0. This is the utility curve of C0. Now here, we are going to include another axis to represent the consumption tomorrow C1. And on this axis, we plot UC1 curve, which is the utility from consumption tomorrow. These are the indifference curves derived from points where there is the same total utility between UC1 and UC0. Any point on this one indifference curve has the same utility. For example, if we see point A and point B, both points have similar utility and so this is one indifference curve. And as we move along the utility curves to the right, we move on to higher indifference curves that give higher level of satisfaction. Now we are going to plot these indifference curves for C0 and C1 with an axis of consumption C1 and consumption C0. Now these are the indifference curves between C0 and C1. On point A, there is more consumption at the end of the period, that is C1A, and less consumption at the beginning, that is C0A. At point B, there is less consumption at the end of the period, that is C1B, and more consumption at the beginning, that is C0B. The point D gives more consumption at both period A and B. D is also on a higher utility curve. Now, the trade-off between C0 and C1 is called as the marginal rate of substitution or MRS. MRS is the slope of the indifference curves. MRS is also called as the subjective rate of time preference. Decisions on whether to consume now, C0, or invest or consume later, that is C1, can be made by looking at R, that is the subjective rate of time preference, 
and we can calculate the MRS by this formula. MRS is equal to minus 1 plus R. R reveals how many extra units need to be consumed tomorrow in order to give up one unit of consumption today. The point A has a greater subjective rate of time preference than at point B. If there's greater time preference, it means that the person is willing to spend more now. And if someone has a lower time preference, it means that they are willing to give up more of consuming now so that they can invest for consumption later. Now let's take a look at the investment opportunity schedule. On the y-axis, we have the marginal rate of return from the investments. And on the x-axis, we have the total investment. Here the curve ABX represents the investment opportunity schedule. At point B, the marginal rate of return is R and the total investment made is I0. Now here we can see that there's diminishing rate of returns. When the individual invests more, the rate of return decreases. The slope of this investment opportunity schedule is the marginal rate of transformation MRT which is the rate at which a unit of consumption today C0 is given up in order to have productive investment and consumption tomorrow C1. MRT is the rate of return. The investment opportunity schedule represents the level of investments available to an individual with his endowed income. The individual cannot invest beyond this curve that is to the right of the curve ABX. If the individual chooses to invest anywhere to the left of the curve, then it means that he or she is not utilizing their fullest capacity to consume tomorrow. The individual moves along the ABX curve, which is the optimum level of investments. And depending on their individual preference, which is represented by their utility they receive from consumption now or consumption tomorrow, they will move along this investment opportunity schedule curve ABX. We can see that in the next diagram, which is the productive investments opportunity set. Here we have C1 in the y axis and C0 in the x axis. We need to combine the indifference curves and the investment opportunity schedule to decide between how much of C1 and how much of C0 that the individual will prefer with the given investment opportunities. Here, U1 is the indifference curve, U2 is a higher indifference curve, and we also have the investment opportunity schedule, ABX. We already saw that the slope of the indifference curve is called as the MRS, that is the marginal rate of substitution, and the slope of the investment schedule as MRT, that is the marginal rate of transformation, we need to compare these two slopes to decide how much the individual will choose to consume now and how much he'll choose to consume later. Without the presence of capital markets, the individual decision maker starts with an initial endowment Y0, Y1 and compares the marginal rate of return on productive investment, which is the MRT with the subjective time preference R, which is the MRS. If the rate of return is higher, he will invest more. And this will continue till the individual's rate of return is equal to the subjective rate of time preference. That is, MRT is equal to MRS. When the indifference curve is steeper, the slope of the curve is more than when the indifference curve is flatter, which is when its slope would be very low. The second half of the investment opportunity schedule curve ABX falls steeper, so its slope is higher than the first half of the curve where the curve is falling, but it is flatter and therefore the slope is low. So at any point to the right of B, the slope of the investment opportunity schedule is higher than the slope of the indifference curve. And at any point to the left of B, the slope of the indifference curve is higher than the slope of the investment opportunity schedule. If we look at any point below the U1 curve, let's say at point X, 
here we can see that marginal rate of transformation is greater than marginal rate of substitution meaning that the slope of the investment opportunity schedule is greater than the slope of the indifference curve so this will mean that the individual will be interested to invest more let's see at point a here the marginal rate of transformation is lesser than the mrs which means that he will invest less on the u1 indifference curve let's say on point z the mrs is less than the mrt meaning that he'll invest more but if you look at point l mrs is greater than mrt which means that he will invest less if the mrt is greater than mrs he will invest more till the mrt is equal to mrs at point b similarly if his mrs is greater than mrt he will invest less till he reaches point b where mrs is equal to mrt so the optimal consumption is at point b at c1 c0 level so this is how an individual will choose between how much to consume now and how much to consume later on given his level of income and given the level of investment opportunities with the help of indifference curves and the investment opportunity schedule now this was for one individual now let's take a look at the productive investments opportunity set for two individuals we have the consumption in the future in the y axis and consumption now in the x axis this curve is the investment opportunity schedule the individuals start with initial endowments of y0 y1 without the existence of capital markets two individuals with the same endowments and same productive investment opportunities will choose different investments because they have different indifference curves individual 2 has a lower rate of time preference that is the mrt is greater than the mrs so he will choose to invest more than the individual 1 and how do we say that mrs is low it's because when the indifference curve is flatter the slope of the indifference curve that is mrs is low that is when consumption c0 increases equally lesser proportion is invested so this is how an individual would choose between consumption now and investment when there are no capital markets where he can borrow or lend 